So in this video, we're going to take a look at Microsoft Loop's first true integration into Microsoft Teams. Now the ability to add a Microsoft Loop workspace to a Teams channel. Let's take a hands-on look and see if it actually makes Loop worth recommending right now. So one of the big downsides of Loop when it first came out was that it didn't really integrate that well into Teams. You had to make a Loop workspace. It lived in your own little personal space and you had to manually invite everybody individually into that Loop workspace to collaborate on it, which kind of misses the whole thing about Teams and SharePoint and the way that the rest of Microsoft 365 works. But I guess Microsoft wanted to get something out and then iterate onto it, which is what they're doing now. So now you can add a Loop workspace into a team, which then gets the permissions of the whole team. You don't need to manually invite people anymore. If you add or remove people from the team, that should be replicated in the Loop workspace. But I've just got access to it. Let me know if you've got access to it as well and what you think in the comments below as we go through this video. But let's take a look and see if it is actually now the promised land. Can it replace OneNote as notes in Teams? Is it as robust as we think it should be? Are there any downsides? Stick around for all the answers to all those questions as we go through this video. Just before we dive in, if you're new to the channel, I'm Gavin Jones from MeTime, help organizations be more efficient, happening to use Microsoft 365 to do it. If you need help, we've got some free training in the link in the description below, or if you want to work together, book a call using the link in the description below. We've got something for any size of organization, so the quickest way to find out is just book a call, have a quick chat and see what is the best fit for you. If you need help getting more efficiency, greater productivity, or just getting more out of Microsoft 365 in your organization, let's chat soon. Book a call using the link in the description below. But on to Loop in Teams. So you can see we're in Teams here. I'm in testing team for YouTube and in the channel, test three, which I set up because I've got uh, quite a lot of tabs in the other testing channels. So I've already added this Loop workspace here, which we can have a look at in a sec. To get that, I clicked add a tab, went to Loop. If you go to add another tab for Loop, so maybe you thought you could have different pages shown in different tabs. Unfortunately, that is not the case. So you can't have more than one loop workspace per channel. So if you go to add a second tab in the same channel, it says well, you can add one, but it's still the, the same, same one that you've just added. You can't add a different loop workspace. So now we've got two and you think, well, maybe I'll have one on one page and one on the other. You can't actually do that either because it just jumps you. You can see I'm jumping between the tabs here. It's actually just, showing the same thing. So whether I, whatever page I flip that onto, it also remembers that when you go onto the other uh, tab as well. So there's no point in having two tabs in a channel for loop because uh, it doesn't do anything. But surprisingly, or I was surprised at least, if I create another channel here, just so it's easy to see, in a new channel or in, in a different channel, the one you've added the workspace to, if you then go and add a loop, you can, or oh, I don't think you can, it, it defaults to creating a brand new loop workspace, which you might also not want to do. So let's see. So it, 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 you can't then have one loop workspace shown in multiple channels. Again, loop is not working the same way as any other app in the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. So whether it's OneNote or Planner, you can either show the same, in OneNote's example, the same OneNote notebook across multiple channels, and actually you can have views into different sections by default in the Notes tab. Across multiple channels, you can have the either the same one shown, or you can have different workbooks shown across channels, or you can even have different views of the same workbook in different tabs in the same channel. Same with Planner, you can have different plans that live wherever in the team and just show a view to them in whatever tab and channel you want. So you could have different plans per channel, you could have the same plan and just different, you know, just easier access to it from each channel. 
in tabs. If you're enjoying this video, remember to give it a thumbs up. It really helps us in the algorithm and click the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified whenever a new video comes out. We've got new videos coming out at least each week on my, everything to do with Microsoft 365. You can't have a different view into the same loop workspace, which is disappointing because it just makes it less flexible and therefore harder to recommend, given that OneNote already works like that and there's massive overlap with OneNote. So I'm really, really trying to love Loop and get it to work, but it's like just some things just aren't really there yet. And I'm hoping Microsoft continues to develop it and maybe takes some of these things on board. If you are watching this from Microsoft, that would be great. So we'll call it Test 4 because that's the same name as the channel. So it's then easier to see, although I don't think we're going to end up losing it because we can only have one per channel anyway. And then this isn't really how I thought it was going to work. I thought the workspace would take the permissions from the team and then you could go and see it anywhere. The permissions are still from the team, but you can only, it seems like it has to be linked to a specific channel. But then if we jump back out into loop in the web view, then that isn't the case. I have to, don't know why I need to refresh it if it's not popping up there. Test four now pops up. And so you know, we can jump between things in the loop view, but it's a bit more difficult in the Teams view because it's like there's a workspace per channel. And ideally, I'd want one workspace for the whole team, or at least the option, and to have different, you know, sections or sub pages or pages or expanded stuff out. Kind of like we've done here, not very well, but having sub pages underneath. And maybe have like departmental pages and pages underneath and you know you could then see how you could use it a bit more like notion or small companies use use notion where they're using it a bit more like sharepoint and they can you know have all of their company documentation in there people can go and update it now we've got the ability to lock pages which i don't know if you've seen before but it's just the three dots on the page click lock page and then if you're an owner or an editor you can come and unlock it so there are there is features there that you could use it like that but then if it's not like one workspace for the whole team and say you added it into the wrong channel to start with and actually then you wanted to move it into general, say for argument's sake, doesn't seem like you can do that at the moment because you can't put a new loop, an existing loop workspace into a new tab. It just sets up a brand new workspace for you. So that's disappointing. If I jump back onto the one we had already, it's only got a few pages in it. It seems to load way slower than my, see that pin took ages to pop up and now it's spinning around. And is it gonna get there? I'm not sure, there we go. But if I do it in Chrome and flip to the same page, it's like maybe one second, less than a second. So I don't know why you would then use it from Teams because it, it's slower. You sort of lose the navigation as well. So you can't like then jump onto any other loop workspace apart from the one that's already in the Teams because you can't go back out anything. Or maybe I'll pop it out into an uh, expanded view. It still doesn't help. Um, you sort of lose a lot of information density, I would say, from working in Teams than working it just in the uh, the loop web app so maybe you want to set it up from teams and then work in in the loop web app i guess that's cool but you think we're, we're trying to keep people in teams so because it's supposed to be one pane of glass and people can access everything so loop's not really living up to that much there and then i thought well cool maybe i'll start using the loop in the sidebar more now that loop is in teams but unfortunately, I don't know why they've not changed this. It just shows you a list of uh, pages or workspaces and whichever route you go through. So say you want to go to this test one we've just done, you think, cool, it's going to pop it open just in this view and I can get straight to it. Well, it doesn't do that. It jumps out into a browser. So it's like, what's the point of this sidebar loop app? Because it doesn't actually open loop in that you're still just jumping out of a browser, which is really frustrating. For example, in, in OneNote, Notes is created for you every time you create a tab. 
every time you create a new channel, sorry. And within that OneNote, although it's hidden, you could still, there's a section for test three, and we can always go and open that in a browser or in our desktop app. And then in that, we can see that there's one notebook for the entire team, testing team for YouTube notebook. And in the background, it's creating sections for each channel. Well, that's cool, so we can always get back to other channels, or if I've got the desktop app, I can knit between them, or I can, you know, if I'm just in Teams, you know, I'm going into that channel and into that notebook, a bit like the files work, where you're going into the document library and into that folder called the same name as the channel. That, it all seems to work, you know, nicely all together. You know what to expect, and same with OneNote. Uh, and it just doesn't work like that in loop. So it's it's still difficult to recommend that you would then go and invest a lot of time and energy in loop just because it seems quite inflexible. Say you set up in the wrong channel and you want to move it, you can't. Uh, and I don't know why, it just doesn't work the same as every other app in Microsoft 365. But I'm really curious to know what you think. Have you gone full in on loop? Are you using it as part of your business? Let me know how it's working in the comments below. And have you got Loop in a tab yet? And have you seen some of the same downsides or other ones, or are you getting on with it well? Let me know in the comments below. We're looking forward to hear your thoughts on this one as it's quite new. I guess the other thing that's difficult to recommend with Loop is that it's just because it, it's so new, not many people have really got experience of like going full in on it. Like, have you got everything in your organization in there? Is it going to run out? The limits are quite uh, sketchy, is the wrong word. Scant on details, I would say. We've got some limits from when it was in pre public preview. They now say it was linked to like OneDrive storage. So the storage limits sort of went away, but now it's in a team. I'm guessing it just takes up SharePoint storage. But that isn't the issue. It's like, well, if you've got like, hundreds or thousands of pages and all links together like someone would do in Notion. I guess because Notion is, Loop is the obvious replacement for Notion with inside the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. If people are moving from Notion to Loop, has anybody, really curious to, to know, has anybody got hundreds or thousands of pages all linked together with different components all going around and is there any performance downside? I don't know that because it's so new, I guess within SharePoint or lists, there's enough knowledge around to know when you, you know, there's, you're going to hit up against the performance limit in SharePoint lists, say, and then when to move to Dataverse, because Loop's so new. I'm not sure, it's, it's still quite tricky to say, yeah, that's the place to go, rather than just using OneNote, which has been around a lot longer, or SharePoint pages, because obviously there's a massive overlap with all of those products. But, uh, but if you need help just picking through what's the best thing for you or your organization to use, how to get more efficient, how to get the most out of Microsoft 365, like I say, book a call, you can the link in the description below. If you want to check out some more videos on YouTube, there should be some popping up now that YouTube thinks you might like. And thanks for watching so far. We'll see you in the next one.